Plunk, ker plunk, ker plunk, ker plunk. Good morning, Elevating Life Church. Oh my goodness, we got a good crowd this morning. It must be Palm Sunday, yes? Yes, it's good to see you. Happy Palm Sunday. And as always, it is good to be with you on this, can I say, uh, hopeful Sunday? I say hopeful because it signifies, of course, Jesus' victory as a, a Lord and Savior. Anybody knew that? Amen. Yes. And so, of course, the, we understand this Hosea, bless, uh, excuse me, Hosea, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, what I wanted to say there, is, of course, very familiar on this, uh, on this uh, Palm Sunday. So again, let me say welcome uh, to Elevating Life Church. Now, uh, as we jump uh, into things, let, let me ask you a question this morning. How are you doing on this Sunday morning? Good, good. It sounds good. It sounds good for me. Well, I think you know, I'm just hunky-dory full of glory. There you go. Well, welcome to our visitors. Uh, welcome. We just initiated you. Uh, <laughs> so welcome to our visitors and, of course, both here and on social media, on all those different platforms that uh, we present uh, our ministry on and with, so it's good to be with you. My name is Drake. I'm the senior pastor here. I'm responsible for most of this, and uh, I'm thrilled to be bringing uh, God's message uh, this morning on this very passionate morning. All right, let's jump right into our message this morning, where we get to connect with God's heart to cleanse our souls so we can experience, uh, let me put it this way this morning, a renewed, responsible attitude uh, that reflects the victory and the triumph of the one who rode on the donkey, if you will, if you recall that story, on the first uh, Palm Sunday way back when. So with that, to start the message, we're going to begin in the book of Psalms. The book of Psalms this morning, chapter 51. Psalms Chapter 51 this morning, as you're getting there in your Bible, or perhaps on uh, the YouVersion Bible app, or uh, on your tablet, however you do that, um, let me do what uh, we traditionally do at this point. Let me ask you another question. Here's our question this morning for our message time. Do you sense, or maybe a better word here is, do you feel fear... When you, let's say, open up and share your heart with another person or with others, especially if those people are new, and maybe some of the new folks understand that question quite well today. Do, do you feel, you know, uncertain about it? You know, where fear comes in, the fear that the other person may misunderstand or judge you. Now, let me say this. If this is you, if, if this is so, you are, you're in good company because most are in this boat, the same boat of fear, if you will. The fear is because uh, they, we don't want to get hurt or suffer the consequences of bad relationships. Who with me? I think we can understand this together. This morning, it, it is a fear. It's a real fear because in the day and age we live. So with that, let's, let's see what we can do to chart the co course differently to overcome this fear, to enjoy life the way God designed it to be. So today, what I want to do is I want to pierce your heart with the reality of God to help you understand why your heart goes kerplunk when understanding is not your reality. Also, what I want to do is I want to give an understanding of the significance 
of understanding in all relationships so that you can vividly feel life, and I intentionally use that word, feel life the way God designed it to be in, again, all of our relationships, where fear of man is no longer and you're living in God's way. Now, I'll do all of this, and I'll do my best, I'll give my best through a message titled, Piercing Through the Heart. So with that, read with me our core verse that will, when understood properly, pierce the heart to produce a vivid, a robust, and let me say this, a healthy life with God and each others. Excuse me, others. Psalms 51.10 is our opening or core verse this morning that leads us into our message. The psalmist says this this morning, create in me a clean, or excuse me, a pure heart. We can say clean, we can say real. Create in me a real heart. You listening, teenagers? Critical. You listen, adults, parents? Create in me a clean, pure, or we can say real heart. Heart, O oh God, and renew a steadfast, a constant spirit attitude within me. How many of you know that some people need an attitude adjustment? How many of you, raise your hand if you know somebody? All right, point to the person that, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. Let me read that again. That's, that's a good. Create in me a pure heart, O oh God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. So join me in prayer as we understand the heart of relationship on this Palm Sunday where we get to empathize, or we can say understand or connect with each other, and of course, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, this morning. So with that, let's pray. Lord, on this Palm Sunday, we praise you for your understanding, your direction. And forgive us for our stubbornness and lack of listening. We ask for insight in your steadfast way. We now trust in your empathizing approach to life to experience your reality and blessings. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Karplonk. Kerplunk. Kerplunk. Kerplunk is a really fun word to say. And it's the game we are going to use today as we move forward with our 2021 theme, It's Your Move, Never Stop Moving. That is our theme for the entire year is It's Your Move. It's not your move just to kind of wiggle a little bit. It's your move to towards God's direction so that you can truly live out life the way God designed it to be. So Kerplunk is our game. Now Kerplunk is a game uh, not everyone is familiar with. In fact, Jesse gave a little testimony this morning at our little briefing. Uh, same, same testimony I had, Jesse, where she saw the game. Uh, she couldn't remember the game, but the moment you see it, you remember it, Right? And so uh, it's, it's familiar once you see it. Did that happen with anybody? Kerplunk, and then you saw the game going, oh, yeah, 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 many of you. Now, of course, we have the game up here and, uh, and behind us. Uh, uh, and again, it, it, who here remembers playing this game first and foremost? Yeah, many of you. Typically... And, and Jesse, you couldn't have said this any better today. She said it. She was like preaching my message. I think you look in the nose. Typically, the game is played with small children. It's a very simple game. To give testimony to that, I played it last week, you know, with my granddaughter. 
but it's typically played by uh, uh, small children. And, and it's, it's simple. Now, as you can see, the game consists of a plastic tube and, of course, many plastic rods that you see there. And this is going to be critical today, today because I'm going to use these rods as a theme in the message. But those many rods uh, that you put through the heart of the game, and, of course, you have many marbles uh, that you put in the top or you place in the top of the tube that are then held by the lattice or the matrix formed by those rods that pierce, again, the heart of the tube. Simple game. Play, players take turns removing a single rod from the tube while trying to minimize the number of marbles that fall through the web, uh, of, uh, the web of rods there that exist, and they, they, want to, uh, get, they want to minimize the marbles dropping into their tray below. Again, as you can see with the picture there. The player who accumulates the fewest dropped marbles in their tray wins the game. Now, like the game Kerplunk, there are many rods that pierce our hearts to form a lattice in who we are and in what we do. That holds up, let me say this, our marbles. Can I say our minds? Rods, let me say it like this. Uh, rods of discipline, we can put it that way this morning, like having the ability to see and face reality, okay? No matter the happenstance and or circumstance. That's a huge rod of discipline, having the ability to see reality no matter what. Now, another rod is, of discipline is working in a way that brings lasting results for everyone. Very important rod. And what about the rod of discipline that a person has when they embrace, let's say, problems to resolve those issues to get back to God's goodness or God's purpose or the purpose in life? Again, my point here, there are many rods that we have in who we are, either you have them or you don't, you don't that form this lattice so that we don't lose our marbles. Again, many rods are needed to form a lattice of discipline to understand and to properly function in life. Are you with me? However. Everybody say, however. however. Favorite word. There's sneezing going on all over the place. It must be springtime. However, there is one main rod needed to hold up all the other rods. If a Christian is going to keep their hearts clean or pure in a way and, and away from fear of being misunderstood or being judged. So in other words, what I'm trying to say here is there is a primary rod that upholds your relationships that then in turn keeps your marbles or sanity in place with God and others. Are you with me? Now, what is this essential, critical rod? Well, I know you've heard it. It's the rod of trust. Everybody say trust. The rod of trust is the most significant rod needed to create and maintain good, reliable, and vibrant relationships. A rod that must penetrate a person's heart if they expect uh, that their connections will be up, upheld God's way. Now let me say this. When I say trust, I do not mean to trust in your own heart. I mean in your own intuition. I mean in your own feelings. I mean in your own emotions. That's exactly what the verse we're going to look at is implying. Because there's too many people that are relying on their own understanding, their own intuition, and that is not the point of life, first and foremost, with direction. 
I mean fully trusting in the Lord's directions, objectively speaking, where we truly live with trust in our relationships. What do I mean? Proverbs 3, 5 through 8, very familiar verse, verses this morning. It says this, Trust in the Lord, God the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, with all of your heart. Now here's the key. And lean not on your own understanding. You see, somebody that leans on their own understanding, their attitude is this, I'll do what I want. And I think I'm all that in a bag of Doritos with the Mountain Dew on the side. And, and this is a critical problem in, in our society today because most people, and I'm speaking to the church today, they want to do it in their own direction. They're going to align their life and how they feel about it, what their intuition, then they're going to blame God and say it's the Holy Spirit. Really? <laughs> Be very careful with that because if you do not know objectively God's principles, His teachings, His directions, His, His commands and how you ought to perform, you better be very careful because we are not to lean on our own, what? Understanding. We have to lean on the trust of God. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not on your own understanding in some of your ways. All of your ways. Submit to Him now and He will make your path straight. Let me put it in the theme of today. It will keep your marbles up here and that down here. <laughs> it will keep your path straight. There's a lot of people that are not on the right path. How many of you guys are hurting? Do not be wise in your own path. That's in your own teachings. In your own cave of experiences. In your own relationships. Do not be wise in your own eyes and fear the Lord. That just means completely to be in awe of God's reality. I mean all of your awe. Not just on Sunday. Not just at an Easter egg drop. But always. That's the fear of the Lord. And of course, he says... Or excuse me, the, yeah, the psalmist says, fear the Lord and shun evil. Don't go in the direction of man. Go in the direction of the Lord. Trust in the Lord. This will bring what? Health to your what? doesn't say your soul, does it? A lot of sick people today. And nourishment to your... This is literally speaking. They didn't have hospitals back then, if you recall. You had to trust in the Lord with all of our of our heart the rod of trust we have to lean we got to get into our heart that belongs to God it is needed to create and maintain relationships with God and each other without it let me say it again everything will go kerplunk trust is essential now let me say this that was the opening like the rod of trust that is needed to uphold your mind with, within your relationships. Understand now, there are rods that form the lattice uh, or a matrix that uphold trust. Some of those rods are the rod of motivation or intent, the rod of ability, character, knowledge, and all of that, the rod of um, uh, history, track record, to name just a few. However, like our last lattice that holds up our mind, there is a main rod that upholds the lattice of trust to keep things stable in who you are and what you do in the Lord. Where you get to enjoy everything if you're doing it God's way, if you're trusting in the Lord. Are you with me? Now what is this main trust or excuse me, main. What is this main rod? Uh, main uh, this main rod of trust is what I'm trying to say. There, I'm going kerplunk. 
It's the rod of understanding. When the rod of understanding doesn't exist or is pulled out of the heart of trust, let's say, then this is when things without a shadow of a doubt then go completely kerplunk. And feelings of fear then certify our concern of being misunderstood or judged or not living properly, uh, not only by others, but even misjudging and, and understand and being in fear of life with who we are. So please understand it's the rod of understanding that upholds trust. In turn, holding up our marbles in our minds and our relationships. We have to understand this or otherwise things come tumbling down to the isolated tray of life where loss and defeat are your reality. Nothing else will ultimately uphold trust except, except for the rod of understanding. Not our understanding. Whose understanding? God's understanding. And Proverbs 4, 7 speaks towards the urgency of this. It says the beginning of wisdom is this. Get wisdom. Now, here's my point. Though it costs all you have, get what? Understand it. I'm just not making this up. Now, with the urgency and significance of understanding, I think you get my point this morning in place. Let's look at understanding, a word that is mentioned 150, over 150 times in the Bible to see what it is all about. So here's the question now. What is understanding? Know this. Understanding is a support element of wisdom that helps a person to relate. Everybody say relate. Relationships, right? Relate all truths to divine purpose with God, self, and others. It's needed to carry out the great commandment and the great commission, and uh, not more importantly, this is what it is, it's needed to carry out life. No understanding, God's understanding, no life. When we study the, the word understanding in the Bible, what you will quickly notice is that it is, it, it is often mentioned along with the word wisdom. And let me say this is often mis, uh, uh, misinterpreted as the same thing. Wisdom and understanding is the same thing as how it's interpreted. That is a misinterpretation. So please understand the two are completely different. Many will say they are the same, but they are not. Quickly, to make this clear, let's look at Proverbs 16, 16, what I mean by this. How much better is it to get wisdom than gold and to get understanding rather than be chosen than silver? Here, gold and, and silver are precious metals, yes? But as we know and experience them both, they are not the same. Gold is followed by silver, and the Bible advises us to stock up on the gold of wisdom and the silver of understanding. But my point today is, if you ask most Christians, scholars, or unbelievers, the world, they will tell you they are both the same. They are not, no, no, no. Did I make my point? No. Okay, with this scripture in place, just know they are different. That was my point. And we must understand those differences. Okay? But today we're going to stay focused not on wisdom, but understanding. But because I'm a generous guy, to appease some of your curiosity, because I'm sure some of you would like to know what wisdom is. Let me give you this quickly. Wisdom is is the ability to think and act like Jesus, God, using knowledge, experience, here it comes, understanding, 
in common sense through God the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, through common grace, common faith, and through insight. That's wisdom. So again, understanding is a support element of wisdom and is not but it is not wisdom. And if you don't understand that and don't get it, uh, come see me. But at the same time, uh, don't think for a second if you go after just wisdom and not under, vice versa. You're not, how many of you want to be a wise person? Can you see the significance here? Hey, listen, if you're a Christian, your hand should be raised. If you don't want to be a wise person, then don't go after Jesus. You can go find some other faith. But I guarantee it. We are commanded, our calling is to be wise in life. Yes? Come on with me. We can't sit in, in misunderstanding here. We've got to understand what our calling is. So just, again, there's the definition. Wisdom is the ability to think and act like Jesus. And let me say this, when that happens, then you have the ability to know what's going on and when to do something. Is that critical? Wisdom. Back to understanding. Now, let me say this. That is why understanding is so important uh, in our life. Now, let's see how to use it quickly to, to reap the benefit it has to offer to subside those fears and, and not be misinterpreted. As already stated, there are certain factors or rods that form the lattice of trust. I can say intent, uh, motive again, character, history, and all of that. But now we know it's the rod of understanding that holds all of that up. Now, how do we do it? Well, you do it this way. You ask three questions every time before entering into a relationship. Teenagers, are you listening? Parents, tell your teenagers to listen. Tell them. I want to hear you. Do you want your kids in good relationships? Then listen. Now, teenagers, tell your parents to listen now. <laughs> there, they had, there you go. We know who has direction in the home these days. <laughs> Three questions, folks. Here they are. You've got to ask, and, it, and they're simple. These three questions to ask to get understanding in place is this. Do they understand me? Do I understand them? Do we understand each other. Not through assumptual thinking, but literally through communication. Not with our phones. Going to our first date again, communicating. And again, do they understand me? Do I understand them? Do we understand each other? I hope so. Then you will move forward or you'll say, no, 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 no. I'm glad I didn't preach this to Sherry when she first met me. <laughs> but I learned. And let me say this. Uh, why do we want to ask these three questions? Because we don't want to be misunderstood or do we want to get caught up in man's fear? As well, we don't want to get hurt or suffer the consequences of a bad or toxic relationship in this life. And that relationship doesn't have to be a one-on-one. -on -one. It could be a relationship with an organization. A church. Okay? So this works in all of life, throughout all of relationship. And it's amazing how many people are hurting because they lack understanding and fall into their own intuition, fall into their own feeling, fall into their own uh, emotions and understanding. It doesn't work. I have job security because of it. And so we have to ask those three questions. Now, Back to those questions quickly, and I'm done here. First, that first question is, do they understand me? This is what I mean. We have to ask this question to fill in the gaps of who I am with that other person in this relationship. Do they understand my motive? Do they get my abilities and, and gifts? Do they realize my character? Do I have the uh, ability to see and face reality? Or am I a person that's going to fall into fantasy when everything hits the fan? Do they know my track record? Now, we want to focus on the negative track record, but do they know my good track record? Do they understand me? Next, the second question is, do I understand them? Do I understand their motive? Why are you in this relationship? 
Do I understand their talent? Uh, we're going to class 301. Do I understand their shape? Do I understand their personality and their preferences and their history so I can become all things to all people? Do I understand them? Then the final question, of course, is do we understand each other? And this requires communication. Say it back to me. Oh, no, I got it. No, 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 no. Say it back to me. No, 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 I got it. No, 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 no. Say it back to me. Rain is over here going, no, 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 we're at the bowling alley and we just did this the other day. No, 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 no. Okay? So we've got to make sure, and that is both ways. Okay? That's that final question. Do we understand each other? Now, each, each other in a way, in, in, in the areas of trust, so that we can begin a good relationship that honors God, respects self, and serves each other. Folks, if, if you don't want to be under, or misunderstood or find yourself in fear, I encourage you to regular, regularly excuse me, ask these questions again before entering any relationship. Why? To get the rod of understanding in place where you then have the ability to create and maintain trust where you stay safe and unharmed in who you are to enjoy the benefits of a, a true, pure a relationship with God and each other. Does that make sense? All right. Like the game Kerplunk, there are many rods to form a lattice or matrix of discipline that uphold our mind and our relationships. But today, understand the most important rod that must pierce the middle of our heart is the rod of understanding. If you will let this message penetrate your heart today and seek after understanding at all costs, as the Scripture says, then a pure heart will be will, with an ability to renew a consistent attitude through God will be your reality. As well, uh, misunderstanding and fear will no longer be your defeat, but will be your victory and triumph through the one who did ride uh, into Jerusalem uh, on that very first Palm Sunday, Jesus Christ, through Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, where all of your relationships are trusted, not through man's way, but through God's trusted way. Now, ending where we started, Psalms 51.10 says, Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit, attitude within me. The message this morning, piercing through the heart. Elevating Life Church, everybody watching, now it's your move to get understanding in place. And let me say, never stop moving or playing with understanding. Amen? John.